Not all Republicans are thrilled with Trump's latest jump in the polling. The conservative magazine, The National Review, came out against the GOP frontrunner in its latest issue. If you haven't seen it, here's the cover. The headline, Against Trump, looks a lot like the Trump Organization's logo. Inside are essays from nearly two dozen conservatives arguing why he is not fit to be president, in their opinion. Let's bring in Fox News contributor and Republican strategist Tony Sayed. Good to see you, Tony. Great to see you, Harris. Thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, my big question is, are you establishment? Well, probably some people would say I am, and some people would say I'm a Tea Party nut. So I kind of find myself aligned perfectly in the middle, I'd like to think. Um, and I'm pragmatic. You know, I think the mantra that we've always wanted as Republicans is to elect the most electable conservative, and that's what you see now everybody fighting for that label. Trump is so suggesting he is Rubio. So you agree with this National Review? I, All these I think their argument is correct. I mean, Donald Trump is not a Reagan movement conservative. Harrison, anybody observing Republican politics since 2008 okay. thought that this year would be that year, right? We would have more of a Ted Cruz or a Marco Rubio type candidacy. That all being said, I think the tactic does not work. Donald Trump has now gone even beyond any label. He's inspired people to believe hmm. that you are now, in his candidacy, have a fighter who focuses on winning, making America great again, these aspirational themes, and they don't believe the establishment conservative Republican Party is going to do anything different than they've done in the last six years. Are they right? He well, I don't necessarily believe that it's time to, to give up and think that we only can go outside the box in the candidacy like Trump, although I do think Trump is inspiring. I think Rubio and Cruz have very mm -hmm. strong conservative records and offer people that option if they don't want to necessarily go as far out as supporting Donald Trump. I put you on the spot with this, Tony, because I know you worked with Jack Kemp. I know your history a little bit, and I know your ties to what we would traditionally call the establishment. I also understand that you understand that the tone of those essays would make you think that the people's voice doesn't count as much as their opinions. Now, I know it's Opinion Magazine. I get it, right? But if the establishment leadership doesn't push against this or walk away from what's written. Does that send a message to the people that their votes don't count? I think you're exactly right, Harrison. This is the danger right now that moves like this make. It continues to create a disconnect between the grassroots of our party and the establishment or the potential elites in the conservative media. And were it not for the fact that conservatives and Republicans feel that we've given up the fight against President Obama, you would not have a Trump candidacy. So in many ways, they have to be introspective and realize it's things like these essays, articles, these opinions, these mm -hmm. almost we know better than you, grassroots voter, that has created the need for a Trump candidacy. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost happening the same way across the political aisle with Bernie Sanders. Oh, no doubt about it. And the anti-establishment movement is real, Harris. You know, we've talked about this a lot. I spent a lot of time across this country talking to real voters. There is a dissatisfaction with both established parties in a way that I've certainly not seen in my lifetime. What do you make of also in the polling today it coming out that one in three Americans say that the actual person who deserves to be in the White House for them doesn't exist in the entire race across both political aisles? Yeah, but you know, I don't necessarily believe things like that. It's always easy to imagine some figure that you think would be the ideal perfect candidate. You know, don't, don't make perfection the enemy of the good. We have many good candidates on the That's Republican side. I think, again, you know, we have an embarrassment of riches, much like we did in 1980. And what did 1980 produce? It produced Reagan conservative mm -hmm. leader Ronald Reagan, a movement guy, and, and George H.W. Bush, an establishment guy, unifying, working together, and moving forward. I think that is going to become, hopefully, what we achieve if this primary process goes correctly. I often write down what you say. Don't make perfection the enemy of the good. Thank you. And I wrote it down again. Always good to have you. We'll have to see. We're only 10 days out. It's, it's an exciting, intense time right now. Keep watching. It's good stuff. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Adam.